Hello, welcome to the draft review of T1. To the draft review of T1 versus Africa in the second round robin of spring. I'm linking X2 and yeah, let's get right into this matchup. T1 versus Africa, Bang versus Faker. Yeah, not looking too great here for T1 versus Africa in their last yeah face offs, notably the summer playoff loss, and then even the first round of spring, not looking too good. Here, the veteran roster looking yeah, to get the potential 2-0 victory here against the 10th place, yeah, should be easy. And yeah, T1 looking further to push up in the standings to secure a potential second place. But starting in the yeah, band phase of game number one, Renekton, Rel and Nidalee here for T1, the first bands, so denying the top lane aggression, Keen and Red, yeah, more notable and known for this, Urel at ban that T1 often here chooses as they are not too comfortable with playing around her. On the other side, these are some very great bands, not only yeah, very strong picks for T1, also the OP ban yeah, from Africa, so yeah, that's just great. Starting with the first pick Hecarim here, yeah, the notable first choice. People value these very highly, especially Cass, great performances in the past. And with yeah, other OP bands, this is a good pickup here. The Udyr then is the response. Udyr can be yeah better than Hecarim in some cases. He wins the early 1v1 and yeah, works better on lower economy, but offers less uh, in the team fights, obviously, Hecarim's fear and just his yeah, disruption in the backline is often better than what Udyr offers in the later stages or skirmishes. Alongside the Udyr is the Tristana. Yeah, in the in other regions like the LPL and a bit more in NA as well, she has risen in popularity as she's yeah, very strong in the mid game, destroys turrets very easily, so yeah, good rotations. And especially against the popular Kaiser, she's just dominating the 1v1 matchup at any stage in the game. So this is very questionable for T1 here to pick her up. Notably also, she's not doing too great into Udyr as well. Just Hecarim and Kaiser are aligned with each other. Not aligned with them is the Victor, who is being a bit yeah, dragged along the right as the team is moving way too fast forward. He is not yeah, capable of catching up. But yeah, his terrain control against the Udyr already very superb and yeah, can deny Tristana as well with his ultimate and W. Alistair here the pickup. He can't really peel against the Hecarim obviously, but Kaiser and Victor not only because of the short range for her, but they're both really immobile, so he has nice targets here alongside the Udyr already good frontline and yeah, pickups. The Tristana Alistair lane not too powerful early on. They have a good level 2 engage, so yeah, T1 has to respect that. But moving into the next band stage, we see here common answers to Alistair and yeah, more engage supports, which yeah, is the repertoire of Carrier being banned here from Africa. I think that's a good choice. Carrier often the main engage source for T1 and one of the main playmakers, so yeah, taking him off comfort is already a good way. Linar and the Oriana. So they're not really super good against what T1 has here, the Oriana obviously being an enabler for Udyr, but I guess like banning more of the standard picks that the Africa players have played in the past makes him a bit more uncomfortable. So yeah, that's decent. The Twisted Fate here picked up, he has not the high popularity as he has in NA, and against the Victor the matchup is not really super favorable, but yeah, he can threaten Kaiser as well. So Africa here already have a good range advantage to zone Kaiser out. He is not having a great time against the Hecarim, but with his ultimate he can also yeah, help his top laner, which is being picked here at last, in potential split push scenarios. So yeah, T1 uh, Africa here picking more picks and mid game power. Gragas and Maokai are then the answers for T1. These obviously can be flexed in the top, top lane and support position here either way. So yeah, Gragas obviously a notable blind pick in many matchups and he can also go AP or AD in this case here. The AP variant would really yeah, destroy TF in uh, teamfights, but it is not super strong and not really 
all that needed as the one already has a high amount of damage and with Maokai probably going for the Imperial Mandate build T1 will also have like, the damage amplification of the Maokai here. Maokai obviously also with his ultimate quite effective against the Urir and the Twisted Fate as they can't really yeah, get away from it. So T1 here has built a nice frontline and good engage. The Victor not really too on theme with this but should they play a bit more laid back and control like jungle entrances and their, these spaces which is not really too Kaisers liking but all of the others really do excel in these situations. So yeah T1 they have the potential for like skirmishes and 5v fights and yeah their range yeah, is a bit of a situation here Twisted Fate and Tristana have longer range than T1 carries but in these situations T1 also has hard engage and disengage so they have a well rounded comp. It's not super perfect, but it's at least, yeah, good and decent. Artrox here, not really making too much sense. The pick is not super strong in the meta at the moment. With Udyr, they have two AD top laners. So Gragas, yeah, he can just rush Bramble Vest and completely demolish Artrox. And yeah, also here with the red side, he is a bit more susceptible. With the changes to his E long in the past, he can't really dash twice, so... Yeah, he can't even get really far away from the Hecarim Gragas should they consider going top lane. So I don't really like this all too much. He's another bruiser, so it's not really a super frontliner. Like a jungler, a bruiser top laner and a support is their frontline. So they're not really all that tanky, even if you might think that way. So yeah, Artrox here, I think they just double down on the mid game power with this pick, obviously. He excels in these mid-game two-item uh, skirmishes, but overall it just plays into like Victor even more, and like even Maokai and Gragas can really deal easily with the Artrox. So here T1 getting a bit of a team composition advantage. Kaiser only thing that's not really on theme here and not really too great, especially considering that it was self counterpicked into the Tristana. Africa Freaks here they have only like the one way with multiple champions here they can look for picks but yeah most of t1 is like either laid back or super safe as they are tanks so Africa can't really penetrate all that much they also have wave clear so yes Tristana excels at turret destructions and she will most likely get a few turret plates but she can't really do like multiple uh, rotations to like hot uh, hard shove and hard destroy multiple turrets, so she won't be super accelerated even though she has the favorable matchup here. As the Maokai is, yeah, can be quite annoying against the Tristana, he has yeah, some tools to cancel her rocket jump, so here Bang has to be careful of that. Overall, T1 here, yeah, in the game, it was not that great, so Gragas went AP by the way, which is like unnecessary against uh, the Africa Freaks team comp. I mentioned yes this blows up Twisted Fate even more so because he, he can't really do anything against an AP Gragas but yeah falling behind as an AP Gragas is very very sad. He will be behind the clock still useful with a, C uh, with a CC but yeah won't really do all that much damage especially as a top laner Kana has been sacrificed quite a bit and with sacrifice I mean his gold income, his waves usually go into Faker or Teddy so he will fall uh, behind in CS come the mid game and the Gragas really needs that gold especially after the poor early game. Also T1's early game at all was super terrible so Faker getting caught a couple of times I mean yeah it's Victor he's super immobile and Africa Freaks was really going for him Still, he was like, playing a bit too aggressive at times. Uh, Teddy also a bit disrespectful, like taking one on ones, which is don't need to be an expert to to predict the outcome of these fights. But after yeah, calming down a bit, using their comp difference to stall out the game even more. I mentioned they like, can really control their side of the map and their terrain with like especially Victor super powerful in these situations. They cooled the game down, found better, and then waited for Africa Freaks to throw. Which, yeah, yeah Africa Freaks with leads in the past 
It shows that they are kind of clueless in the mid and later stages in terms of macro decisions. They took a risk, risky Baron take, T1 punished, and then from there on, Africa Freaks. Their team comp was past their expiration date, T1 was ramping up more and more so, and then they were also playing quite cleverly, look, using the jungle uh, choke points for the massive advantages of their team comp, and Africa Freaks was then just shredded to bits. So T1 here capable of picking up the game one win on back of a bit shaky, but at least smart play in the later stages. In game number two though, we start again with the bands. Here obviously Africa now on the blue side, Senna, Thresh, again perfectly great. You don't want Teddy to play Senna, you don't want Carrier on Thresh, and you don't want the hyper carries on Teddy that are enabled by Thresh. Renekton again, it's a good band for T1 because no one wants to see Renekton being picked. So that's a good thing. On the other side here, Seraphine ban on blues, uh, on red side. Obviously very great to see this. High priority on the champion here. Tristana, yeah, she was strong. So yeah, T1, as they still want to pick Kaisa every game, uh, decide to ban her. Again, in other regions she is pick ban. So yeah, the power level of this pick is really great. Of course, not blindable in all situations. But if played around, you can really excel and accelerate the game. Udyr here, uh, a bit strange because of the triangle of the junglers, right? With Hecarim, uh, Hecarim winning over Lilia and Lilia winning over Udyr, and Udyr like kinda winning over Hecarim, kinda, right? In the early inv individual stages, uh, in terms of uh, team fights and team play, Hecarim obviously providing way more than Udyr ever can. Udyr has nice synergy with the Seraphine, a bit better than Hecarim in my opinion, but uh, yeah, with Seraphine being banned, this is also off the table. So here the Hecarim is being high priority. T1 here playing a bit of a bait with these bans, so Hecarim and Rel are this time open, T1 not banning her as they nearly always do, so Africa Freaks here handshaking the trade, also with Tristana. Kaisa becomes a bit better, a bit better, but still strange because Hecarim is like super effective here against the Kaisa individually and in the team fights, and Rel really can't hide Kaisa's weaknesses as well. So yeah, still questionable pick here. The Alistair and the Zaya, so handshaking the bot lane picks here, not showing too much. So Alistair already good against both of these. Zaya with the Hecarim. Not too great because Zaya obviously answers hard engage. Rel is some form of this hard engage. So yeah, they might expect more of that to come. So I guess it's a bit of a safety first and pre precaution. But individually against the Kaiser, Zaya is not doing too much. But I guess it's fine. Nidalee then here being uh, picked in the let's last stage of the first phase. Uh, obviously terrible. Like. She's not working well with Kaisa. I guess they both have poke, uh, but nope. Uh, already Alistair and Hecarim, so already meat shields that can soak up the poke. So that makes no sense. Um, also, she's always on a timer because she doesn't really scale all that well. Individually, Hecarim also uh, wins 1v1s. And well, there's a champion that exists that does everything Nidalee does, but way better and has different modes. And yeah, overall, like, why isn't this a, Nidalee, uh, a Lilia? Very, very strange. Obviously, Hecarim into Nid uh, Lilia in the early game, also in Hecarim's advantage. But still, if you pick Nidalee, this is not, like, she's not fixing the problem. Also, this already indicative, T1 wants to play around the top side. And Afrika, with their safe bot lane, they can just ignore bot and then pick a mid laner that can make sh create a bit of control, or hold the wave even, and then yeah, set out to scale. T1 will like will lose scaling wars already because they only have four champions, with Nidalee being completely useless later on. In the next band phase here, yeah, we see the pick potential of the Twisted Failed was a bit pesky in game number one, so yeah, they want to avoid that also if they pick Nidalee, and want to like pressure top lane here, 
against Keen. They don't want a uh, Twisted Fate to suddenly show up faster than uh, Faker ever can. So yeah, this makes sense. On the other side here, first the Irelia ban, which in so Irelia will only be picked, I feel like, if there is a Nar. So they want to pick up Nar themselves. And then they ban Nar themselves. So it seem seemingly they had a change of plans here. Uh, doesn't matter though, like the Nar ban like it doesn't bring anything. Nidalee Nar is also not super great. And again, they can just block up top side. They already know T1 wants to play around this. So yeah, the tank could always fit in there. Then here's Zoe being elected. Also kind of strange. So Kai'Sa, Nidalee, Zoe. They have some poke, but it's all AP poke. So that's really strange, considering also double AP in jungle mid. Um, Verdant Barrier is still not nerfed on patch 11.5. So yeah, it's really, really strange. And these picks are not really working well together at all. And yeah, Zoe also, if we expect a tank to come in uh, from uh, Africa, which we obviously can with the Nidalee signaling top lane aggression, Africa is most likely to block the aggression with a tank. Also, we see Hacker and Alistair already elected. Zoe is not doing too great against tanks, is my point here. Additionally, against Daya, not too much either. Uh, the answer from Africa is obviously the tank in the top lane. Very smart. Great choice. Victor into Zoe. Victor really likes buying Verdant Barrier. So yeah, he's doing fine here. This could also be a Syndra in some cases, but I guess the safer wave clear and the more defensive approach. His W is not really doing too much here against T1. And there is an issue with range, right? So Saya and Victor are not super, super long range champions. They have range. They outrange other champions, yes, but they're not the epitome of long range, which obviously here T1 has with, uh, let's ignore this, with Nidalee Spears and the Zoe. They have a good poke comp already set out and Rel can, yeah, can be used to peel. So T1 here with the poke comp setup, which would be really effective against Victor and Zaya. Picking up Alistair Hecarim and the Cyan Soul, Africa Freaks has a super easy, not really difficult, like they just have to press R or they just have to run in. They don't need to like land miraculous skill shots or anything. They just need to run into T1 and only Rel is standing there so far. Yes, the set here will come in, probably a tank set as T1 really needs some frontlining and yeah, someone to stand in Sion's way if he like drives into T1. So yeah, T1 here has the uh, poke comp advantage in the mid game stages, but yeah, sh should time take on, Africa Freaks gets tankier, they can just ignore the poke and hard engage into them. There is nothing like for T1 to do afterwards. And yeah, also with the nature of their poke all being AP, this is facilitated and even like able to yeah, be achieved faster for Africa Freaks. And with uh, items like Verdant Barrier for Victor, has no problem at all. So T1 really needs to get ahead fast and early. And any gold that falls into Hecarim and Victor's pockets is like super, super effective because these are the champions that can be then, yeah, quite problematic for T1. And in the game we see, yeah, T1 again, poor early game decisioning and they're not capable of like coming back. So that t uh, that poke comp falls behind. They don't get the item power spikes on the right timers. And yeah, from then on, it's just downhill. They have some valiant effort and fights here and there, but they're not able to wrestle back the game. While Afrika is making quite a few mistakes here and there, and it was at times really close to one, one late game team fights, even with the massive gold and team cap. Just shows how great these players are, by the way. Um, they weren't able to do it. I mean, the comp disadvantage in these stages is just too huge. And T1 here again with the onus on them. It's a bit yeah, strange. They drafted this way against uh, Dragon X in one game as well. There it worked out. They were able to wrestle back the game. But here, yeah, 
You don't want to see that. If you're the better team, you don't want to put variants in your play. Yes, it looks cool if you get a like 20 and 0 perfect game uh, stomp, because these champions are then capable of doing that more so than others, right? But just play standard with a standard. Eliminate variation if you know uh, statistically your players are just better and uh, yeah, will get the win just from the standard play. So again, maybe this is just an experiment. Uh, in terms of experiment experimentation, I have a few things to say at the end here, but um, yeah, it's just, it's, it's unnecessary. So we come to game number three. And yeah, I mentioned Freak of Freaks here picking up the win, just to be clear. It's now one and one. And T1 entered into game number three. We bans here, Renekton, Rel, and Tristana. So T1 staying with these two. And yeah, the Renekton from the uh, ban phase of game number one still finds his way here. Tristana obviously signaling the Kaisa priority here again for Teddy. Again, it's questionable because yes, Tristana is the hardest noun counter uh, in general against the uh, Kaisa. There also exist the Aphelios, for example, or simply other long range champions. And against tanks, she's also not doing super fine. On the other side, again, these bands are great. This here signals that you want to pick up the Hecarim, right? Because Zaya obviously excels against hard engaged champions. And yeah, this thing is if you ban Zaya here, you leave open the Seraphine. And this is great to see. T1, even though Faker, yeah, he mentioned in interviews that he finds her boring, is picking up the Seraphine here most likely again for the mid lane position. Hard to imagine Carrier honestly, but yeah, could happen. So the Seraphine here being first picked, obviously perfect pick. Uh, Hecarim and Kaiser then elected. So yeah, that's the trade. Hecarim obviously what a Freka was aiming for. And yeah, they are also gladly liking to pick up the Kaiser aligned with the Hecarim obviously in their forwardness playstyle and with the most notable counter band of the Tristana, the Kaiser. Yeah, she's at least a bit better. And yeah, again, don't forget Thrash's band. So normally Jinx, Daphelios, these hypers that are also very good against Kaiser won't come in. So here, in terms of popular AD carries, she's in a way better spot than yeah, in other scenarios because there are these two bands already deny multiple answers. But then here, T1 picking up the Udyr and Dinar. So Udyr here again hacker against Hecarim, we already mentioned this. And as I mentioned in the game uh, number one draft, Seraphine Udyr, that's a great combination. Now though, I don't know why you need to blind pick this here. You don't need to expose your uh, AD, uh, your top laner. Also, you have the blue side, so you can be yeah a bit more flexible with your top side. This could always be a scale more scaling champion in some cases as you can hide him a bit better. Also, Nar against these two. He's doing fine, not too amazing. So this is just very strange. Again, I mentioned AD carries are already being banned here. And another pickup. So this could have just been an AD carry to secure one before the next ban phase. And as Kaiser has already been elected, and the jungle as well, you would just like mimic Africa Freak's uh, picks, so you wouldn't reveal more of your team comp. Now, while you always can counterpick the Kaiser, the Yonar can now be counterpicked as well. The Alistar here being picked up alongside the Kaiser for the super standard uh, LCK bottom lane for 2021. Alistar, like, yeah, you would imagine Seraphine is a nice target, but Seraphine is usually so far back that she's not really reachable. He can do f super well against Udyr and Nardo, as he can peel quite nicely. And yeah, again, Afrika going for super engage. All three champions are aligned. So yeah, that's quite good. But the Seraphine is obviously the X factor here that makes these sinning champions here on T1 side yeah, at least a bit better. Her ultimate is just super oppressive and can bounce back of these engagers so nicely. In the next band phase here, Cannon. Cannon against uh, Nar. It's a bit of a strange matchup. I would actually favor the Nar in most cases, but Cannon 
yeah, seemingly in scrims he is doing fairly well as we see him banned quite often. The victor here would obviously with his W destroy these two champions and while he would not be super perfect here with the uh, super aggressive theme of Afrika, if Afrika like, puts on another mode, in this mode obviously Hecarim is not super effective as he is playing a bit more defensive, they can mimic what he wanted in game number one. On the other side Ezreal and Galio, so Galio here with Uli and now would obviously amplify their engage, which yeah, could be even more disastrous for Kaiser. Uh, also his W yeah, against her short range, really powerful. And here lastly the Ezreal. This is a bad ban I think. Uh, T1 doesn't want to pick Ezreal like 100%. So if we assume Seraphine goes mid, right, T1 needs a lot of damage uh, and DPS in the AD carry position. Especially Hecarim and Alistar are like, yeah, more on the tanky side. So the Ezreal is not really offering that. And he's not really an auto attack champion, so like um, Arden's sensor builds from Seraphine are not really that great as well. So I think this is just like bad. I mean, it would be a safe AD carry uh, against the engage, but it would not be an AD carry that can deal the damage T1 needs. Silas here being picked, more sought as the counter pick to Seraphine as he can steal her ultimate in either matchup against Nar or Seraphine. Not doing too great, yes he was buffed a couple times, but he's more so great against mages with his super super high base magic resistance, um, so yeah. Not too optimal, but I guess the Seraphine ult is highly valued. Tam Kench Aphelios, I think, yeah that's like great thinking here. The uh, Tam Kench is the old enabler of hyper carries, like the Thrashes nowadays. He was back in the days, like notable, he jinxed Tom Kench meta at, um, what was it, 2016. So yeah, that's a nice heads up player from T1, remembering this like champion for Aphelios, right? They need a hyper, they need high DPS here. So yeah, coming up with the Aphelios or the jinx, I think it wouldn't have mattered like so much, but Teddy obviously a great Aphelios player. And Aphelios also doing super well into Kaiser. So yeah, I really enjoy the Aphelios here more than the Jinx personally. So T1 here, they have the high protection and high support for the Aphelios with their supports. Have like Bruiser to engage and bounce the Seraphine ult. So yeah, overall again not perfect and the order of picks not too amazing either. But at least their team comp, they don't have the owners of themselves. They scale nicely, they have solid team fighting, they have wave clear. They have yeah, the whole package, even though yeah, there were some bumps in the road. Zillin here being elected lastly for Afrika, so this confirms that the Silas does in fact go into the top lane. So yeah, against the Nar, it's not a really great matchup, but he can steal the Nar ultimate as well as the Seraphine one. The other ults he can steal, not too great. Zillion though, yeah, nice pickup with the Hecarim. We have seen this in the down one uh, Kia mat just before this against Dragon Axe and it was quite a, you know, quite effective and yeah it also helps Silas a bit more to like be a bit more risky with his playstyle into the Seraphine like he's obviously like similar in his uh, idea of like hyping up this team with like movement speed increases just like the uh, staff of flowing water and with his ultimate also regener regenerating tons of HP. But yeah, you can't compare any champion to Seraphine at the moment, it's just too overpowered. But here, it falls in line with the rest of their team, so they are looking to skirmish and yeah, pick up a bit more of the T1 players here individually. Again, here through the top side, as Dread and Keen are their strong suit. But for this, I feel the Silas is a bit, yeah, a bit strange. Uh, Irelia is open here. Obviously, Irelia not too great into Seraphine. And yeah, with the uh, red side, it's a bit riskier to play uh, carries uh, here. But I think that would be a better individual uh, yeah, solution. Overall, though, in this game, T1 cleaner early game. Yeah, there were some mishaps in the macro after the 20th minute. 
but overall way cleaner game way better the draft obviously also way better than uh, than before the game was obviously like the best game out of all of them faker again here with like great seraphine uh, play continues being undefeated on the pick and he won ends the series here two to one and yeah that's the end and final match score i don't want to like blabber on uh, as it is the game video is already quite long but yeah three games yeah they need some time so here t1 now yeah, continuing rising up in the standings here africa freaks the chance for playoffs is not zero yet but it's it's just super super tiny there's just one scenario that i could think of where they are able to get the final playoff spot and yeah for that they actually kind of need to play tiebreakers as well anyway here t1 continuing their fourth win in a row yes the one loss here is a bit of yeah stinking a bit and i have to say the experiments in dra draft game number two and maybe even in communication as it yeah, positioning was a bit off at times i hope they yeah, can flatten this out till next sunday where they will meet chovi they will meet hunger life and yeah if yeah Genji is managing to lose against Dragon X in a 2-0 fashion, I think. T1 can actually secure second place with a victory against Hunger Life. But yeah, that's it for today though. Please stay safe, have a great day. Till next time. Bye.